Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today I am making a tutorial that was requested based on one of my other tutorials, which is how I made this mold here. So this mold, if you saw my, which video was it? It was the one where I made the little memorial pet, like the pet memorial or any type of memorial frame. And I had, it was kind of like an oversized coaster and I put a frame with a photo in it and some dried flowers. It was really cute. I'll tag it up in the, I'll put a screenshot of what the thumbnail looks like in the corner here so you guys can check it out if you haven't already seen it. But in that video, I made this mold because um, I had these frames here, which I had gotten from the dollar store. I want to say it was like 10 to 12 years ago, maybe longer. And I just had recently found them in one of my art bins <laughs> that I was going through. And I was actually in, I was actually looking for a frame and I couldn't actually find one online that I liked in the terms of the size I wanted and stuff like that. So it turned out this one was perfect for what I wanted to use it for. And, um, but I didn't want to, well, A, I didn't want to use this exact one because I wanted it to be silver. And I didn't want to paint it because I was thinking that I might want to make more of the piece that I made in my video in the future. I am taking orders for those now as well on my website. So if you want to check it out and see what those are, and if you want to purchase one, I can custom make one for you. But this was the frame that I wanted to uh, basically make a mold of. And from this mold that I made, I made these ones here. And these were the silver ones that I made. So, so obviously the mold worked out really well because the details on these are almost exact, like it's perfect. So anyway, so I had some, a bunch of requests to show how I made the mold. So that's what I want to do today. So let's put this one over here. So what I did, so basically I'll just go through some basics of that. Really, I'm not someone who makes molds very often. Like I think this is probably the second mold. <laughs> this one here is probably the second mold I've ever made um, for resin. So it's not, I'm definitely not an expert. I'll just, but I'm going to show you what I did because I found the process of what I did was pretty simple. I think anybody can do it. I mean, I'm, there may be obviously, and this is a pretty simple, um, mold to make in terms of like the item that I was trying to cast the mold of. Obviously there's a lot more complicated molds out there. And my, this technique that I'm showing or what I did here is not necessarily going to work for everything, but if you're just looking for something simple, um, Hopefully this will work for you. So, so what I have here is I have this tray and this is just like an acrylic plastic tray because I believe it's best to set molds in some sort of like a plastic material. You probably could do metal too. I just don't, I haven't tried metal. So like if you had like a metal tin or something and you wanted to do that, I think that's not an issue, but I've, I've seen and the molds I have seen people make, I think have mostly been in plastic. So, I decided to use this here and this was also the right size. This is actually just a, a drawer. <laughs> it's a drawer from one of my little vanity organizer things. And um, I was just really looking for something that was like super flat, didn't have any like waves or anything in it. And obviously was acrylic, didn't have any seams, like basically nothing that was going to disrupt the mold. So you want to look for something like that. I looked at my Tupperware and my plasticware and I, everything had some sort of indent or like a doming inside the bottom like there's always there was something inside that was kind of like not allowing it to be the perfect choice so i ended up going with this one and it's perfectly flat with the exception of this little dot here um which is probably how it was made like injected or whatever but for what i was making it wasn't going to be an issue because the way i made my mold is i ended up putting these two things kind of like this on both sides of that. So that wasn't going to get in the way. So anyways, that this would end up being the perfect choice for me. So then the, the actual, and then I have a measuring cup here with my popsicle stick. So I'm just going to be using that. So we just need those. And for the silicone, I used this brand here, which is the smooth on, and this is their mold star 15 slow. Now I don't know a ton about all the different variations of the silicone molds. I do know that some of them are um, more flexible. I think this is the more flexible one. And then there's other ones that are less flexible. So if you need something that's more rigid and it doesn't actually bend, there are um, silicones in this line for 
you know, stiffer silicone as well. But this is the one that I, when I did my research, this is the one that a lot of people were recommending. So this is what I ended up buying. And silicone is not <laughs> cheap by any means. So I know a lot of people who want to order custom molds from like Etsy uh, artists and things like that. A lot of them will say, you know, molds are so expensive. And it's because the product is so expensive. I think this this is like a trial kit and this was like $60 Canadian, which is crazy expensive. So, I mean, the bottles are decent size. I mean, these are the bottles here. And for this type of mold that I'm doing, I might be able to get like maybe three out of this shape, like this size. So that's this mold here. Like, so you imagine like you're spending like $60 to make three molds. Of course, you're you know, when you have to sell them, your pricing is going to be pretty high. So that's, I just wanted to mention that because I know a lot of people are there. I don't know if they're just not aware of the pricing of silicone and why, you know, Etsy sellers are selling them for the prices that they do is because the materials are actually very expensive. So anyway, so this is the product I'll list it in the description below. But the process from here is actually very simple. So now when you First thing you'll need to do is I cleaned my tray. So I use some just kind of rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel. And I just kind of wiped out the entire inside here. So this way it has a nice clean surface. And then you just place these in. So we have this one here and this one here. And we want to make sure that they're flat against the plastic. They're not going to move at all. Now, some people do use double-sided tape. So this is like a really thin kind of like a rubber cement type of double sided tape. So you could just use that to hold it in place. I didn't do that when I did mine. So I, for these frames, so I'm not going to do it this time either, just because I didn't feel I needed to last time. But if they generally do suggest that you secure it somehow um, into the molds, this way it doesn't you know, move around at all. But these, because these are so flat on the back, I think we're going to be OK. So in any case, we have that. And then what we'll do is we just have our two parts. So we have our part A and our part B, and it's a one to one. So mix ratio is one A to one B. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and measure that out. And one thing I wanted to mention while I'm measuring this is um, it's great that we're able to make <laughs> mold ourselves with these type of materials or you know these type of products. The one thing I would caution though is you know, don't make, um, don't, co you know, make molds of things that are like copywritten because it's just, you know, it's, well, it's against the law for one. Like you can't be reproducing something that, you know, someone else owns the copyright for, especially if you're going to make a mold and you're planning to sell that mold. Um, if you're just making it for yourself, because maybe you want to make something for your kid or whatever, then, you know, maybe it's not as bad because you're not actually making any profit on it. But if you're planning to sell then, you know, I would advise against it. You know, I'm a graphic designer and I'm really like, you know, particular about copyrights and things like that. So I really try my best not to do that. In this case, like I so said, these frames are so old. I don't even know who the manufacturer is. I got them from like a dollar store. So I have no idea who owns the rights to them. And I'm not actually selling these frames. I'm only making them to make other pieces of art with them. So, all right. So as you saw, um, there was... Each of these um, has two colors, one's white and one is blue, or this teal color. And then you just mix it until it's thoroughly mixed. For me, I usually do it for about two minutes. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about a minute or two now that I've been mixing it. You just wanna make sure that the color becomes consistent, like there's no streaks of anything in there. And you wanna make sure just like resin your scraping your sides so that you know you're making sure everything is getting mixed properly so once we're done that i'm going to go ahead and scrape off my popsicle stick and hopefully not making and i sh to be honest guys i should be wearing gloves it actually does say on the instructions to wear gloves so um let me go do that really quick okay so i'm back so then it's mixed i got my gloves on now i should have had those on from the beginning but i forgot and uh, goggles are important it says on the um, safety instructions and obviously a well ventilated room this room is uh, well ventilated i don't have my fan on right now but i'm going to be putting it on as soon as i'm done here so so we did that and then we mixed it up it says the pot life for this is about 50 minutes so we have lots of time 
And from this point, I just pour really slowly to kind of get, you know, all the areas and also to kind of minimize, like I think it minimizes the bubbles because I don't use a pressure pot. And I know, I think some people who do, um, I don't, you know what, I might not be right with that, but I think some people use a pressure pot with their silicone. I might be wrong though, but um, I didn't have any issues with bubbles. Um, when I was making my previous mold. So I don't think that, at least for this product that I'm using, it wasn't an issue at all. Like I didn't get any bubbles. It's just kind of, it pops on its own. When you're mixing, I didn't mix very fast. I just hand mixed it slowly and didn't have any issues with um, with even bubbles with that either. So, so we're just gonna pour it over everything. And I did mix eight ounces because I know that's what I mixed before and that perfectly covered the uh, these two frames that we're using here. so that's pretty much it so now it's like I said you have to leave it on a level surface so that it will self level it's pretty much all the bubbles that are in here the little tiny ones are all gonna pop on their own and then you let it sit for four hours and uh, yeah so I'll come back in four hours and we'll get that out of the mold and we'll see how it looks okay so we're back it's been maybe closer to five hours now since we left this to set so it's all ready now and uh, so we're gonna get it out of the mold but before we do that I just wanted to show you to the cool thing with working with this and I'm sure not sure if you guys have seen these satisfying things on uh, <laughs> online but the great thing with the silicone especially if you use a plastic cup it just comes right out like and you can reuse the cup for the next time so mine's not gonna be as satisfying because I didn't set it but you can just see that it comes right out See if I can get it to work. No, it's too thin. If you put it on its, if, you, if I had put the cup on its side, all of it would kind of have, you know, just stayed to one side. There we go. Got most of it. So yeah, so this way now you just can get all this out of the cup and you can use it for next time. So there's that, which is fun. But let's get this out of the mold now. So like I said, it's been about five hours. Now getting it out of the mold is a little bit especially with something like this is a little bit tricky because the uh, plastic that I put it in is not flexible. So we're going to be purely just trying to get the, I mean, it's good for structure, obviously, because it, the, the, you know, this plastic casing didn't move. It allowed everything to stay in place, but it does make it so that it's a little bit more difficult to get out of the mold. Oh, sorry, out of it. So I almost had it. Did you guys notice that my nails match my mat? <laughs> I noticed that. I was just re-looking at the footage that I shot earlier and I noticed that and I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. So, all right, so we'll just have to pull it out of the mold like so. And here we go. So we have both. I This one started to come out while I was doing that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we do have a little bit, because I didn't tape it down, there is a little bit of, of the uh, a leakage under the, but it just, it could, because it's so thin, it just kind of peels right off. So, and again, we can peel that right off of the frame. So the frame is still perfect. And I might just have to trim just a little bit here. Now I do, I originally used my X-Acto blade when I wanted to do it. I see a lot of people using, you know, these little cuticle cutters. So this one isn't particularly sharp, but it does the job. So you can see, and, and again, I'm not usually doing this kind of stuff. So I'm not as clean with it as other people. But anyways, it gives you pretty much what you need to do here. And 
there we go so so we have that there's a little bit more there I can trim but really um, when you're put, put pouring your resin in here this is going to be the back of your piece anyway it's like this part so I'm not as worried about what's happening in the back I'm mostly worried about making sure that they the imprint on the inside is good which it is so so we have that one and then we'll take out our other one so there we go so we have our mold but so like I said, it's, it's this is a, a nice way if you want to be able to do it yourself at home. I mean, I, obviously there are people out there who are doing it as a business. Uh, I'm sure that if you buy your silicone in bulk, the pricing can be a little bit less than what I paid because I paid for a trial set. Uh, I can show. Oh. So actually, I guess when I did the first one, I put the... You can't even see it. When I did the first one, I did the frame this way, but sideways. But um, in any case... Uh, it doesn't really matter either way it worked out but yeah so I was saying is like if you're doing this for a business I'm sure you can get silicone at a different price in bulk and there's lots of different brands I'm sure this is kind of the one of the easiest ones to find for at least that I was able to find online I don't want to say it's foolproof but I mean it's a one-to-one -one. you throw it together and you as long as you're mixing it thoroughly and putting it down it seems to be you know pretty foolproof like I didn't really have any issues with it there's no bubble issues you can even see inside the mold there's no like issues inside the mold in terms of bubbles or you know, I'm already getting glitter in there but you know there isn't any other issues in terms of the quality you can see how detailed the mold came out so so yeah so I think it's pretty great but anyways, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, please, guys, if you're doing stuff like this, please don't use copyrighted material. And, you know, if you find little sculptures of like characters that, you know, are have been made by famous companies or even just, you know, smaller creators and, you know, they've made these things and they put a lot of time and energy into it. Don't, you know, don't steal from them. Maybe you want molds of like little buttons or little flowers or something and you're finding little, you know, pieces at dollar stores and things. That's a, you know, better use for this kind of stuff. Or if you're making your own, you have a 3D printer or, you know, you're a sculptor and you're able to, you know, sculpt out of wood or out of acrylic or out of something and then make molds of that. I mean, that's what I think this would be amazing for, to really create custom, custom things. So anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out. Again, like I guess I'm not professional with this. This is just kind of me <laughs> fumbling my way through to make some molds, but it worked out for me. So um, if you want to give it a try, let me know. If you have any advice, tips, Please leave them in the comments for anybody else who's looking at this video and wants some extra information and you want to, you know, help them out. Feel free to put your expertise, you know, or your experiences in the comments. So this way we can all learn together. All right. But with that, I'm going to get going. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I do have all my links uh, for socials and things in the description under this video, including my Instagram, my Facebook, sorry, not my Facebook. Well, I do have a Facebook, a Facebook. I don't really use it. <laughs> my uh, TikTok, my Pinterest, my uh, my website. If you want to buy me a coffee, the links are all in there as well. And uh, it really does all help out a lot, especially with the channel and things like that, because, uh, you know, just a, I'm just an artist trying to create some videos and help everybody out. So if you don't mind um, giving a little bit of support, I would welcome it. I and mean, obviously just watching the video is support enough. But thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.